Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Saudi surveillance. Old Joe Biden. The American government is coming for the Saudis because they got a guy out there named Turkey Al-Sheikh who's dictating the sport of boxing. And fight fans feel that Joe Biden is the man to get involved. Get on over to Saudi, maybe <laughs> launch a few airstrikes. How dare the Saudis come into the sport of boxing and take over with their sports washing. And they hope Eddie Hearn's going to be somewhere in the area when they launch the airstrike. Because how dare Eddie Hearn with the secret society set up Anthony Joshua for an e two easy wins to go right into an undisputed distinction. This is a travesty. This warrants war, bloodshed. Call in the missile, the air missile strikes right now, but make sure Eddie Hearn, make sure he's over in the, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia when the air strikes are called. Now to that I say, in the most respectful way, the boxing fans should hold their horses. It's not taking it to the stupid. Get, get Joe Biden. We need, we need the American government to get involved. This is sports washing. This is what this is. This is a travesty. Hey, yo, Mick Nicholas, shut up. Now look, we all know all these sports are corrupt. We know what the hell's going on in Saudi Arabia. It's get them sports washing at its finest. But one thing I will say is obviously the Saudis want to change the way the international community view them. And you know they've gotten involved in other sports, man, soccer, golf, you know, cricket, man. They got involved with the NASCAR. So they're, they're, they're getting involved in things and they're putting up big money. But we have seen um, those key decision makers behind those aforementioned sports draw the line in the sand. And those professional athletes that want to leave from the United States and go to Saudi Arabia and chase that big money. Especially those are the guys who are receiving endorsements. They're like, you, lose, you leave here, you lose your endorsements. And there have been many athletes from different sports that are like, shit, I'm out of here. I'm going to Saudi. I'm about to get a few million. Possibly, possibly to make it, you know, huge money out here. Just to sit here nickel and dime just because I'm worried about what people are going to think about me. Now, I didn't hear anybody shouting, shouting about, oh, get Joe Biden. They got the NASCAR in Saudi. Get Joe Biden. They're putting on this huge golfing event. Whoa, whoa, where's Joe Biden? They're playing cricket. Oh, they got this soccer thing, and they're trying to get basketball going in Saudi. Nobody was calling for Trump and Biden and Kamala and Obama. and Y'all need to kill that noise. Now, what I will tell you is this. For those of you who don't agree with what's going on in Saudi Arabia, y'all... I'm just going to say, y'all got to get used to that shit. Now, I will say this, and I'm, and I'm being honest with you. I'm being very serious now. I do believe that there's a lot of attention on Saudi Arabia. Um, there's always been, but I, I think when it comes to the sports, I think there's a lot of attention. And, and this is how that works. It starts off with, you know, people who are complaining, like with me. I talk to secret society talk because it's a serious conversation, not just for Saudi Arabia, for boxing, period. You know, stuff that takes place here in the States that you can't explain, like that crap that just took place with, uh, what's his name, man, who tested positive uh, up there in Canada, you know what I'm saying? Look at that crap the other day with Virgil, Virgil Ortiz was fighting and Weeks just jumped in and stopped the fight. A few months ago, he jumped in and stopped the fight with Barroso and Roly Romero. So the secret society is in full effect. But, but what normally happens is you get rumblings at a very low level, right? And then eventually those rumblings get the attention of someone a level above that. Then those rumblings get 
the attention of a level above that person. And then that guy starts talking, and now it starts to get up to levels of people who uh, can have, can affect change. And, and I do think that boxing is such a huge sport, popular sport. There's so much attention on the sport of boxing. You know, boxing has, all, has even now, you know, it's box. People say, oh, boxing title. Boxing's still huge. Boxing's still in the headlines. And uh, a, a lot of these, these, these people in, in, in positions of power, they happen to keep up with uh, at least the big names in the sport of boxing. And I, I truly believe it, it all ties into this whole thing with the Irish mob and the cartel and, you know, the Kinahan thing and Kinahan being out there in the Middle East and Africa floating around and people. There, there are articles on this, right? People think, oh, you're just always talking about. No, I read the articles. <clears throat> they believe that uh, from Africa through the Middle East, the Kinahans are being protected by law enforcement out there. That's, of course, money. Uh, money can get people a lot of things. And they feel that's why it's been damn near, damn near impossible to get anyone from uh, the Middle East to Africa where uh, the Kinahans have um, roots uh, to get anybody to turn on them and help to extra them back to the States. I mean, so... I think there's a lot of tension on what's going on in Saudi and how they're just bringing all these fighters over and doing event after event after event. I mean, this is, I'm not the only one who talks about this. But when you see now, like I'm seeing people really complaining now. I'm like, yo, I do this shit for fun. And I'm, I make a lot of jokes about it. <clears throat> but then we try to have good talking points because it's all a conversation. That's all a conversation is, you know, you just have some speculation, you do some assumptions, and you, you know, you just talk and everybody can have a different opinion. We won't always agree. Hell, most of the people on this, on this channel, you know, we, 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 we may understand where each other's coming from, but we don't always agree. But at least we can kind of understand <clears throat> the point that I'm making or that the, the subscribers are making. But I, I really think, I really think that um, this year, depending on just how things go with the sport of boxing over there in Saudi, I, I, I really feel it's going to, you, you're going to notice uh, it making, it's starting to get some traction and getting the, the headlines of uh, <clears throat> international news. I, I truly believe that. Now, there's some people who sit back right now, you can't wait to you probably stop the video already and start typing your comments. Like, Hood champion, took it to the stupid. Nobody's worried about little stupid boxing. Oh, no, hold your horses, McNicholas. You don't, don't you take it to the stupid. This shit is a big deal. These guys got Riyadh season going on. There's, you know, 30, 40, 50, you know what I mean, 300, 400 million thrown at this damn, this whole Riyadh season event. Is is over half? It's over. <clears throat> it's half a billion. Um, it's over half a trillion dollars, just sitting there to be used, just just to, to 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 help people see Saudi as a destination. And now you got all this crap going on with with boxing and, and the fans around here. And see, and that's the problem. The more people talk about it, and seeing Twitter is a toxic place. There there are a lot of of people, and I'm noticing it, complaining right now. And that is, it's like out of frustration that, you know, Saudi Arabia has just come, come in and just taken over the sport. And, and, and people seem to be dis disappointed and butthurt that they're like, this, this is corruption. I'm like, oh, of course it's corruption, dumbass, you know. Wherever there's the money, that's where the sport's going to go. And somebody was like, how? I can't see how the IBF can just sit here now and they can just, you know, look past Hergovic. And Hergovic hasn't come out and spoke, uh, spoke up for himself, saying that they're not gonna do him wrong. He should be the guy who's uh, in line for the IBF. Hey, yo, McNicholas, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, Hergovic still in line as the mandatory. But how, how in the world is is the winner of AJ and Ngannou <clears throat> gonna get a direct shot at the winner of Fury and Usyk? Easy. Cost step aside money. And Eddie Hearn's not giving him step aside money. Frank Warren's not giving him step aside money. You know who's giving Hergovic step aside money? The Saudis. 
And when we're talking about step aside money, you know what? The, the turkey out of sheep, he gets what he wants. Yo, y'all acting like this man can't give Hergovic $1 billion if he doesn't want to. They say, hey, Hergovic, shut up, move out the way. Go your ass back to Croatia. Take this $1 million, you never have to box again. I want to sit here with my little popcorn, with my little, my little kebab, my little yogurt sauce and shit, and sit here with my with my people and watch AJ versus Fury. If that's, I think that's the direction they wanted to go, and we don't want you in the way, Hergovic. That that's how it's happening. And, and will Hergovic get an opportunity? Uh, true, of course, I believe. I believe Hergovic gets an opportunity. But but don't 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 act like it's. It's nothing cosmic, you know what I'm saying? There was one person, oh, hood champion, takes a rocket scientist to, to really understand what's going on here, so I don't think you have the answers. No, hold your horses. I, I've got the answers, so I'm qualified. I'm a rocket scientist. If, if, that's what you, if that's what you feel, well then, sir, you're welcome. I'm the rocket scientist. I'm, I got the qualifications. Don't take a very bright crayon in the box to understand why things are happening in Saudi Arabia. It's because of the dollar dollar bill, y'all. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. It doesn't go cash rules everything around me, cream. Take it to the stupid. Du, 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 du. Yo, man, y'all got to come on. But what I will say, man, pay attention at these conferences, press conferences, pay attention at these, uh, co- these, uh, these, these things that are happening with these sanctioning bodies all, all over the world. And when they have all these different people showing up there, I, I've been saying this, man, this, well, that's where the deals happen. Uh, up at the WBO, you look at this potentially Terrence Crawford now, Earl Spence stuff fell apart. Terrence Crawford going directly at Tim Zhu. That, that's what's rumored. That's what it, it looks like it could happen. You know, we got to wait and see. But, you know, there's just there are decisions that are being made all the time. And it's always going to be for what's in the best interest of the sport. And you see De La Hoya? De La Hoya's sour now. He's sour. And he's got Bernard Hopkins trying to take people into the bathroom. Because that's what men do, according to uh, the alien Bernard Hopkins. De La Hoya sour because he done burn a bridge. You know De La Hoya want to go over there and get some of that Saudi money. They want to go over there, man. Not, not dirt money, get some of that sand money. They want to go over there, man, and, and, and get caught up in that sandstorm. But he came out here running his stupid mouth. You think De La Hoya doesn't have the ear of some people to at least have a conversation? The sour, look what he tried to do to Al Heyman, man. And top rank tried to do to Al Heyman. Everybody went at Al Heyman. Now he top rank has happened to be involved over there in Saudi, so he's happy, but De La Hoya is on the outside. Don't have a dog in the fight. Don't know why Al Heyman really doesn't want to be involved, but I mean he's got his reasons, obviously. But I just I just I just think uh, as this boxing snowball continues to grow, especially by the, by the end of this year, I want to see just how big these events get in Saudi. Um, the fighters' purses, which we know is that's never going to be an issue. I want to see just how big it gets because eventually it's going to get to a to a, to a, to a point to where it's so large, which it's I think it's on the way there. That a person who doesn't who's not really paying attention to the sport of boxing is going to see what's going on, and they're going to say, oh, "What the hell?" Especially. If the big events here in the in Las Vegas go away, and everything goes to Saudi Arabia, I am telling you, man, it is coming, people. That shit is gonna be on the headlines, man. Fox News, MSNBC. It's gonna be on every major news station. The Saudis have taken over boxing, and there's dire concern, and the blah 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 blah. I'm telling you, it's coming. Just like it's coming that the, the big events here in the states. It's gone. Look at what they just took. Before, everybody, like, hey, if you want to make it big in boxing, you got to go to Las Vegas. You got to go to the United States. You got to go over there, man, if you want a bus. Nah, man. They, they, they nobody need to come over here no more. People over here need to go over to Saudi. 
Nobody need to go to the UK. No, no UK fighters going over to Saudi. Everything is gravitating towards Saudi. You know why? Because they go where the money's at. Anyway, I just think people just need to chill out. Talking about we gonna get Joe Biden involved, man. Joe Biden, man. You know, let me tell you something. The Saudis ain't worried about Joe Biden. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Did you see how uh, when uh, Turkey Al Sheikh was speaking, he he don't have time for no bullshit. Eddie Hurt. Eddie Hernan Frank Warren uncomfortably laughing. You could just see everybody, they, they know what they're dealing with. They know that Turkey Al Sheik is a he has good intentions towards boxing, but that's a that's that's a, a dangerous game they're playing. They can't go over there and get too comfortable with him. It's it's a dictatorship. He calls them all their brothers. Um, and I truly believe he wants he, he wants a win-win situation. Win for them, win for the country of Saudi Arabia. That's what he wants. But he, he's not necessarily looking to, 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 to be clownish and, 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 and to look like a buffoon when people are, uh, when the, the guys from the media start asking questions. Like, he, he's not a guy who takes questions. Not just anybody can talk to him. That's why he killed that shit. Uh, was it yesterday, the day before yesterday? When they were trying to ask him questions, he... One, hey, so what do you think when De La Hoya says they're not all fights to come to Saudi? He was like, we'll miss him. Boom, done, gone. No more questions. Like, he, he, people don't just walk up and ask him shit. And that's, I think, the more people are going to learn. Like, he's not Eddie Hearn. He ain't Frank Warren. You know what I'm saying? You don't ask him nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because what you could hear is off with their heads. People better understand what the hell's going on over there. Just go over there, be respectful, get your money. But I, I have a feeling that this is going to get real uncomfortable real soon. If, I, I tell you what, I could be wrong, but you see how they came with um, athletes who were from Russia and they were seizing their bank accounts and everything, man. They were just doing, like, kind of like how they were approaching the ball, you know, not allowing them to box and participate in sports. <clears throat> I, I could I could see the U.S. doing that for boxers who are going over the uh, who want to go over there to, to Saudi to fight. I could see where they try to seize their their purses and lock down their bank accounts. I, I could see all of that coming. It, it just depends on how it affects the economy here in, in those big cities like Vegas, um, <clears throat> you know, California. Um, especially in Las Vegas, if if the big events, the mega events dry up, I, I I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's gonna go far left. And you may say, well, "Where's your crystal ball, hood champion?" No, it's just called common sense, man. Just an observation. And and look, I don't mind being wrong, but I throw some shit out there and then stimulate you guys to have a good conversation, right? But that being said, y'all just y'all just chill out. Let's see where this goes. But people are, people seem to be, some are, some are cool with it, but some aren't. And then, of course, the thing about AJ being in line for, for a shot, that's what really has a lot of people frustrated. They're like, this isn't a good thing. They 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 The complaints that I, for the way that I perceive it, they're like, okay, you got the Saudis coming with the money, making all the fights we never get. Now you got Joseph Parker and Zhang, the winner of that fight, really have, have put the work in and deserve a shot at Undisputed before AJ. And they're looking at who AJ beat. Jermaine Franklin, Hellenius, Wallen, and he should beat Ngannou. None of those guys, they feel, can touch. Uh, especially who, who Joe Joyce was when Zhang fought him, um, and what Joe Joyce did to, to what Zhang did to Joyce twice. The fact that Joseph Parker fought four times, and when he fights Zhang, that would be his fifth fight. If he clipped Zhang, just coming off of a water and Zhang win, those two those two wins are much bigger than anything Joshua has done um, in the last couple of years. And they're like, this is this this isn't this is still corruption. Uh, the 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 right the right guy. 
as far as who the key decision makers want, the secret secret society wants. That's the per that's the person who will go on to fight for all the belts. Um, the 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 wrong guy, although probably the most deserving, but that's not what the secret society wants. They're not the one. He or <clears throat> he or she isn't the one who's going to go on and get the opportunity like what boxing fans thought would happen with the Saudis being involved. So what they're seeing is this is all, they feel like it's just all BS, all corruption, and it's nothing's got any better except fighters are making great money, but at the same time, they're like, they're sure they're taking a pound of flesh out of them because they got to fight exclusively for Saudi Arabia. They got to speak positively about Saudi Arabia. It's propaganda, man. That, that's really what it is. They, you can't just come out there and get your money then come back and say something negative about Saudi Arabia. You can't do that. That's not how that works. See, then you start playing with fire. You know, I, 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 yeah, I'm telling you, I've, I, the amount of countless briefings that I've been through <clears throat> when it comes to visiting other countries and kind of just being careful on you know, things you say. Uh, you just got to refer people to your public affairs rep or the public affairs office. You just don't say shit. So I've learned that. I've been in positions where, like when I was over in Saudi Arabia, I'll give you a true story. Uh, we had guys who were coming on base to uh, deliver things. And I was one of the escorts. And we had a, a group of guys, some guys are from Pakistan, India, and some Saudi guys. And um, I was at the gate to meet them. And they, they like when I used to come there to meet them because there were some things we had in common. I'll just leave it as that. Uh, but I didn't treat them bad because there's no reason for me to treat them bad. And um, they would bring me, you know, they come there and they'd, they'd be eating lunch and they go to the guy who was cooking at the dining facility and, because that that was their friend from downtown. Anyway, I was getting curry, shrimp, and all kind of shit. And people were uh, were p pissed off because they're like, how you getting all that good food? I'm like, yo, those those guys hooked me up. But they, did, they couldn't understand the connection I had with them. It, it just had a... They would never understand it. I'll just leave it to you like that. But anyway, there was a guy who just randomly approached me when I was on a bazaar, we had an opportunity to go downtown in Riyadh to a jury, uh, it was a jury area. I forgot what they called it, but I mean, when you walked into, into that place, that sh it, it was so bright from all the like 24 karat gold and shit like that. Like I, it was like blinding. So we're in there and there's a guy who approached me. I, I swear this happened. It, I, I, there's two things that happened when I was down there. Uh, the first, I was with my friend, and uh, like like my mom's from the U.S., my dad's from the Caribbean, from Trinidad. I ran into a, a guy out there, his mother from Jamaica, but his dad from Trinidad. But he and I, a lot in common. So he and I, I was pretty much rolling with him, man. So we uh, we at the market. This guy approaches us, and he was like, he called, you know, hey, hello, brother, salam alaikum, bam, bam, bam. And, you know, we're respectful. Hey, you know, while it comes so long, how you doing, man? And But we, we ain't really saying much because we got a little bit of street smarts to us, too, as well. We've been through those, those briefings. We knew, you know, you got to be careful when you're downtown. And he was like, he called me uh, he called me by my name. And I, I just uh, I just kept talking, but I acted like I didn't hear him. But I was trying to process, like, yo, did this motherfucker just call me by my name? And he was like, oh, brother, you know... This is to say hood champion. Oh, brotherhood champion, um, how are you? And I'm like, uh, you know, so just looking at jewelry and he's like, yeah, the brothers who deliver this and that to the base told me about you and there's a guy named, you know, um, so-and-so. And I'm like, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, obviously someone told him about us. Must have said we're coming down here to the bazaar, to the jewelry store. And so now I'm uncomfortable as hell. I'm uncomfortable with shit because uh, I'm like, yo, what the hell? We out here in Riyadh. This guy, we have, we had no idea who he was. He just approaches us. So my buddy, man, he's from Queens, and uh, he had me cracking up because he was out here. He's, he swear to God that they were about to take us to Chop Chop Square and kill us. But I'm like, yo, just relax. So anyway, he like, so what do you think about Saudi Arabia? And um, 
We were like, yo, you getting jewelry? He was like, oh, no, I just wanted to say hello to your brothers. Do you like Saudi? And we were like, you know, um, we were like, yeah, Saudi's nice. And he was like, what, do you, how would you compare Saudi to, to, to like the United States? i like, well, you know, good, it's good people. It's just very nice. It's just nice, man. He was like, so would, would you say anything about you heard about Saudi is not what you think? I'm like, I, you know, I really, I really have nothing to say, man. I was like, it's just Saudi is nice. And the guy who were getting the jewelry, who were looking at the jewelry, they had nice jewelry, man. We started talking to him and we kind of uh, told him, hey, we'll talk to you later. We got to go. So we left the store, and we went walking around, basically to try to get away from that guy. But now I'm real uncomfortable because I'm like, <clears throat> I don't know what eyes are watching us. So now my buddy and I are like, yo, we got to get out of here. But we know we had to wait like, and uh, like I think another couple hours for the driver to come back because there was a group of us who were able to go down. But now we're uncomfortable, and I'm like, and I don't like this. So we uh, we go over to we walk over to this other area and they were they had like um bags they had bags you know they had all kind of stuff but they had bags and we were going to go back to the jewelry spot but it's like let's go over here and get away it was more open too so we we're there just chilling and this guy is showing us the bags and you know they're trying to sell us stuff and i'm i don't got way off topic but i'm just explaining something to y'all so we got i got way off topic i got way off topic but i'm gonna I'm gonna finish the story so, so we're over there, and I'm like, damn, that guy's really trying to get us to say something like uh, 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 to, about Saudi, knowing that both of us are like, you know, military members. And, I, and we were just trying to figure out, like, okay, how do, we, how do we get up out of here? So check this out. So now we're looking at these bags, and this guy's talking to us. And he's like, are you guys from the U.S.? And I'm like, nah, man, I'm from Japan. And he starts laughing. And he's like, oh, uh, he was looking at me, right? And I was like, why is this guy looking at me like that? He was like, so you are from the base? He's like, I've heard about you. I was like, you heard about me? So I'm like, you know, what the fuck? So my, my, he's like, you you two, he's like, you are a hood champion and you are so-and-so. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on out here? So obviously, those guys... See, I didn't realize a lot of those guys who were working out there, coming to the base in downtown, they all stayed in uh, certain buildings together. So they would talk. So anyway, the word got out downtown that there were these two guys that there were some things we had in common that were nice and treated them good. That's what the word was. They were like, oh, they're different. Because I gave a guy um, like clothes and shoes to send to his kids. You know what I'm saying? And when I left, I like a whole like uh, a whole bag of clothes I came to. I just gave it to them guys, man, because they treated me really good out there. But anyway, he's like, "Well, come." He told he said, "You guys come with me." And now my buddy and I are looking at each other like, "Yo," I'm like, "Yo, man," I said, "Yo, look, man, we uh, we're okay right here." He's like, "No, you're scared. Don't worry. There's nothing to be scared of. We are friends." And uh, I was like, "I." So we walked behind his uh, his stand, where he was uh, had his you know cat, the, the 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 what's that shit called the, the register, and he had one of the workers there take over. Walked us to the back. This man had uh, they had food there. They had the pillows on the ground. He's like, "You guys are brothers. You're a family now. Don't worry." He's like, "We hear you guys treat everybody nice." He, um, and then he was curious about us, you know, our backgrounds, where we were from our names so anyway he's like do you guys you guys are hungry and i'm like no we're good man we just ready to go we're about to go and he's like no you like uh you like uh tea you like chai you like this and um he's like don't don't worry there's no problem we're friends we're friends anyway the guy goes he says wait here and he tells somebody get bring them sandwiches yo they brought us some sandwiches man with tea and shit but it was it was like it was like chai Man, that shit was good. But those sandwiches, man, it's like they had gr the, the chicken. They had grounded it up with that yogurt sauce and that boiled egg slid, man, with fresh, you know, tomato and lettuce. But anyway, that shit was one of the best sandwiches I've ever had in my life. But we left we left out of there and came back. And uh, I remember we were talking. I was like, yo, I said, we had a good, we ended up having a good experience. But we were just like, yo, you got to be careful what you say. 
Because fortunately for us, we're not dummies who will get out there and decide they want to say something negative. You know what I'm saying? We just treated everybody with respect. We weren't we weren't going above and beyond. Uh, and we weren't being idiots like some guys who weren't even giving people water working in that fucking Saudi heat. That's that's crazy. I don't care how you feel. You can't bring your ignorance over there. This man out there on a, on a, on a, working on a, on a military base under a contract in that fucking heat. And you're so stinking nasty, you won't give them fucking water. So when I come and give, make sure everybody has cold water and I make sure everybody has breaks in the shade, which is the right thing to do. All of a sudden, I look like a fucking hero to them, to them guys out there. The guys from Nepal, from Saudi, from India. I ain't doing nothing special. I'm just doing what I want somebody done to me. And that's the right thing to do. Fuck, you know how hot Saudi is, man? So those guys, when they would see us, especially in the morning, depending on what route they had, if we would come up there, they would go crazy. Go crazy, man. They'd be shouting shit, you know, calling, you know, our names, you know, by our last name because that's, that's on your name tape, on your thing. And guys be shouting, you know, you know, about my name. They would, let's just say they were saying hood champion. Hood champion, hood champion. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then the, the American guys couldn't understand why they were doing that shit. But without me getting into it, I knew why. So I ended up having a good relationship with them guys, man. And when I left, I left a lot of clothes with them. Because when I was there, I never ate the food from the base. Every time them guys would come on base, they would always bring something from a friend and I, man. You know, food from, you know, whether it's Saudi, India, the Filipino guys would bring us food. Because that's what we wanted. We didn't want that shit on the base. Like, yo, bring us that food from downtown. Because we couldn't go down there. But you got to be careful with what you say. Because if we would have been out there be acting foolish and saying shit, that first guy who approached us, I'm sure he was just waiting for us to say something. Now you can have yourself in a world of shit. Anyway, I done got way off track. But uh, that's a true story. But nonetheless, everybody needs to watch what they're saying, watch what they're doing. Um, because this shit going on over here in Saudi Arabia, it doesn't take much to get the attention of... Uh, people who are in certain positions of power who can just make everybody miserable. Anyway, I done lost track of everything I was talking about, so I'm in the video. Hope y'all enjoyed that story. It's a true story, what I just told you, man. The guy hit us up in the, the little jewelry spot. Out of nowhere, knew our names. We go over there by the guy with the bags, and he knew who we were. And then we just realized all those guys lived together in the same compound, and they would talk about us because how we treated them. But it's really because we, we made sure they had water and were able to eat their lunch and take breaks. We, we, we didn't mistreat them. And there are some people who will go out there and, you know, man, they just take it to the stupid. And, I, you know, that, just, that ain't how we operate. That being said, y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.